This is not a test. This is your emergency broadcast. It's almost so. What you gonna do when they shut it all down? How you gonna move? How you gonna eat when it ain't no food? When the lights go out, that'll be your doom. How you gonna see when it ain't no peace? Military outside walking in your streets. My advice to you is be try to get out of the city. Because pretty soon you know they come into your hood with that vaccine. And if you get it, I can't imagine what's gonna happen. You might turn into a zombie and they start attacking. Hey, if you come after me, Lord, it's gonna be a tragedy. I'm sorry. Because you are that, you are capable. You are gifted and you are so unique. All of the things that you may hate about yourself are your strengths. It's okay to be soft. It's okay to be opinionated. It's okay to be different. And it's so okay to just be The world awaits to receive you. Bitch, I'm trying to cut out the curse, curse words, y'all. I'm trying to come in without curse words. Blessings, blessings, blessings. Welcome to Uncensored Enlightenment Talk. And you're here with your host, Grace Levi. Yes, yes, yes. I'm having a kindness is cool day. Yes, we have a hat day today. Um, I know I look cute, don't I? I still look cute with the hat. Anyway, I hope you guys are doing good today. Obviously, you see me. I came in hot and heavy. When I play that music, that means the content that I share will be triggering, okay? Now, the next story is going to be a story that touched my heart. Yes, because it's going to be a story that highlights my people, my Haitian people, the tribe of Levi. They're over there losing their damn minds. And I'm saying it sarcastically, but not. We're going to tell you a story of why immigration happens in America, because that's going to be our next story of how the Congress and other um, government officials are getting down and dirty about our immigration and what they're actually doing at the border. But before you get all in the wild, about oh our border oh our border you need to figure out why these people come here it ain't because all these countries are shithole countries it's because these countries have resources and our alleged cia and our government participated in some type of um operative program to try to infiltrate their particular system so i have a story to tell because now i've seen it unravel in my particular country where my people are from and it brought it to life it's always been a life for me i saw the pattern where the united states will go in they will see a little issue and make it worse and then you will have people who are people who are first they end up being they start off as activists and these activists try, try to push against the government in their particular country that is now being funded by America. Okay? This is what they do. They go in because it's like some crookedness going on. People are like, no, we don't want this particular president or whatever going on. We want to vote him out. Now we have some issues with the election. Um, there's some election fraud going in. So at that point, you may not think that the Mer America was already there but they be there, okay? Then you got America allegedly come in on the public side and say, well, there's no democracy going on there. That country's in a crisis. There are people calling out for help. We're going to give them help. We're going to give them aid, okay? Now, in our particular situation in Haiti, he's going to talk a little bit about it, lawyer for workers. Um, but what I will say is this particular situation in Haiti, you may not know. You may not believe. Because you have people like Trump that to call it shithole countries. But we have way more resource in Haiti and that little ass piece of land than you actually got in America. How about that? Yes, I said it. Yes, I said it. There is a rich abundance of oil and new oil mines that has been found in Haiti most recently, just before all this controversy started taking place. Because mm -hmm, somebody want to take that oil, refine it for free. The only way they're going to be able to do that, they take over the government. Not only do we have this newfound ref, um, unrefined oil, but different reservoirs of it and a whole lot. We also have a whole bunch of buried treasure. And, and people know that. They're like, buried treasure? What is y'all, pirate of the damn? No. Basically, we got trust issues. We ain't had no damn banks. And then we have people 
from all over different countries too. Different people who were seeking freedom because when we first got our freedom in America, I mean, I'm not doing probably back. When we first got freedom in Haiti from the French, it was known as independence. And according to our constitution, anybody who was seeking refuge from a country who was passing uh, practicing genocide, you know, religious apartheid. We were the sanctuary country. You didn't know that, did you? Did you know, Haiti said, anybody could come over here. But a lot of them came over with their gold. They came over with skills. They came over. But, you know, us as Haitians, I'm going to be honest, a lot of us buried our gold, buried family heirlooms and forgot where they was at, all types of stuff, I promise you. I promise you. Okay, so this is a little bit about the rich history of Haiti because we ain't broke. The only reason why we're broke is because they cut us off from actually doing trade. Every country needs to trade. So if you can't trade your goods, which is oil, got gold and other minerals there that they use in electronics. But the only way to get these resources out is if you sell your land or you um, subsidize your land to another country for um, a contract that's not beneficial to you. This happens in every country when it has to do with the United States. So this is a pre-breakdown of what's happening in Haiti. If you guys don't know, if you guys don't care, this is a repeat. And this is the reason why you have an influx of migrants coming into America because their country has been destroyed because of the resources. And now this is an addition, additional stage, if you don't know, this is part of it, of them actually creating the one world order. Yeah, because when you start dealing with the uh, federal, not the Federal Reserve, the Bank of International Settlements, did y'all know, did you know about that? When you start going and using money from the Bank of International Settlements, because now your country is empowered, in war, um, disinvalue, your money's disinvalue, you have the IMF, who's largely controlled by its donors, which most of the donation come from America, European Union. I'm shut the hell up. The IMF to me is another, it's the financial um brother and sister to NATO. Did you know about that? Did you know about that? So they go into the countries allegedly after they get destroyed and say, hey, buddy, you messed up. Your people is disenfranchised. They're not working. Your resources, you can't get them to work properly. You got other countries coming in here, using up your land. You got in debt with them. We can help you now. This is after America came and fucked up shit. Okay. Oh, I cursed. I almost made it, y'all. Oops. Okay. God forgive me. Um, that's after allegedly America comes in to do what they do via the CIA. So now you got the IMF in there. This is how the world, one world order come about. Think about it, guys. Think about it. We're next. America's next. We're going to talk about that through migration. Keep thinking that you're untouchable. The IMF is going to have to bail us out of what we're going through next. That's why I say read Obadiah. You thought that you were making treaties with people who were going to put you in position, but they literally knocked you out. It's in the Bible. Now, let's listen to what's going on with Haiti. I know I went a little bit deep, but that's why you love me, because I make y'all think a little bit deeper and put it together. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying. Let's go. Welcome to another episode of If They Ain't White, It's All Right. Mm. Today's episode is about Haiti and they ain't white. So it's all right that there's a guy in Haiti named Barbecue. It's He's formerly uh, uh, wait. like the His name is Barbecue. It's not Barbecue. <laughs> head, a high ranking member of the government security now. He's repping the set, getting real active out there. The United States telling its citizens, Run for your lives. Get the hell out of Haiti. You know what Barbecue did? He's like Heath Ledger Joker from The Dark Knight. This man went into the Capitol, broke into two prisons. The gang has released about 3,000 prisoners, murderers, rapists. They're just free running through the streets of Haiti. Haiti, 
recently had a devastating earthquake. Their prime minister got assassinated in his house. You would think the United States of America that has all this energy for situations in Ukraine and Israel that have nothing to do with our country. We're just helping our friends. You would think we would help Haiti, but they ain't white. So they're doing all right. Is that, I mean, what else is the message? Mm. The city has its prisons broken into by the gangs and all the prisoners have left the streets. The U.S. says, I just leave. Nothing to see there. Get out of there. Leave Haiti to themselves. They will figure it out. No peacekeeping forces, no envoys, no diplomacy. But we got plenty of bombs and energy for other situations around the world. Now, I'm going to stop there because I do love lawyers for workers, but he got it a little messed up. Let's listen to the comments because us in Haiti, my people, we ain't stupid. Right here, hard Cali. We don't need help. Okay. Have you been to Haiti? Didn't see you while I was working the ER. Don't fall for it, Ak. U.S. is creating a destabilization so they can come and take over the government and sign over mines, concessions to U.S. corps, and huge indwendums. Lithium deposits are here. I'm, I'm glad people are woke. I love you, lawyer for workers, but we don't need the help. One of the things that I want to show you that looks like propaganda to me now, I'm going to keep it real. My grandma is here right now um, in America, but she travels back and forth to Haiti because we have property out there. We have um, tenants out there. And in her particular area, which is Jacques Mel, the things that they're describing is not happening. There are flare-ups places, but what they are describing, I believe, is kind of like a great up, uh, untruth or it is hyperinflated. Because when you look at some of the uh, pictures that they have of Haiti, no fucking way. Excuse my language. We a little bit raw than this. You're not going to come and you're not going to broadcast us. You're not going to broadcast us and you not get touched. If we touch ambassadors, presidents, I'm just keeping it real. That's why America's not ready for immigrants to come in because it's a different value system. That's why they're afraid of me. I'm not trying to make y'all ren renegades, but I know what how my people think. No way would you be there recording them do this shit. This is why I know it's fake. Let's just watch of emergency as violence escalates. Armed gangs demanding the Prime Minister's resignation have attacked two prisons, allowing thousands of inmates to escape. And, and wait, let's highlight this. The name, the gentleman who they say that is actually running like the, the top person that's running this name, Barbecue. Barbecue is not barbecue. Barbecue. He literally worked for the government at one point and went rogue. Now, either this gentleman is a decoy and someone sat there by the alleged CIA because he worked for the government to go set up these little camps of radicals because these radicals, you're going to see what they have. I keep saying this is not normal because in Haiti, we don't produce guns. So where are the guns coming from? We didn't have a big problem with guns. We had a problem with voodoo. Throw some damn voodoo on you. But guns, we ain't had that. Let's go. Leaving dozens dead and wounded. Violence has reached unprecedented levels since the assassination of President uh, Jovenel Moisi at his home in 2021. It's estimated that gangs now control as much as 80% of the capital, Port-au-Prince. Our Prime Minister Ariel Henry travelled out of the country last week to try and drum up support for a multinational peace mission to bring this gang violence under control. He looked dead. Sorry. Armed gangs have set up roadblocks in many parts of the capital, Poho Prince, following an explosion of violence. Gunfire was reported in several neighborhoods. People drive and walk by bodies lying in the streets, some with their hands tied behind their backs. 
Police officers are among the dead, overwhelmed by coordinated attacks orchestrated by a former officer turned gang leader nicknamed Barbecue, who says he won't stop until Haiti's Prime Minister Ariel Henry is gone. We ask the Haitian National Police and the military to take responsibility and arrest Ariel Henry. Once again, we're not against the people. The armed groups are not your enemy. Arrest Ariel Henry for the country's liberation. These weapons that we have are not to hurt our brothers, who come from the same milieu as we do. The poor, they trust us. These weapons are a symbol of freedom. With these weapons, we will liberate the country. You hear what he's telling you? Please listen to what he's saying and not listen to what they're saying. Now, I'm not saying I'm I'm, I'm okay with, with all this crazy stuff, but I will say that the, the narrative, the people in Haiti are not afraid of him. And when, like I told you, when the young boys started thinking that they were going to go left and that they were going to run down on the older Haitian people and take over and gave them a, you got to get out of here by noon, they got they swooped by the elders because we do have respect in Haiti. I don't care. I'm a very respectable woman to my elders. That's how we've been taught. There is, a, a, even though I, I, our older people are a little crazy in our family, we, we leave, I'll leave them before I tell them all. But with that goes to say the narrative that's being pushed about Haiti, please, America, keep on just ignoring us. Just let us do our own thing. Let the tribe of Levi go through what we need to go through, our own curses. We know what we did. We practiced voodoo. We, um, you know, we did not continue to be the regal, um, not the regal tribe, but we, we continue not to be the priest. Okay. We lost our position. Okay. It's a little bit more Haiti people, Haitians. I'm going to tell you, and then you don't know Jesus Christ. You keep on messing with these deities. I'm not saying all of this is totally because of that because we have all of these natural factors that's playing a part. But what I will say is that America, leave us alone. What they're pushing is a whole damn lie. Just keep on saying Haiti is a shithole. Don't come tuck our resources. We don't need your fucking help. Excuse my lady, excuse my language. We don't, I'm gonna just keep it real. This is the first time you're gonna hear someone black keeping it a hundred. Let us figure this out. Don't come. We ain't gonna cross your borders. We ain't messing with you that much. We really not because Haitian people realize, like when you come here, foreigners gotta realize. The foreigners came here and uh, they went to high volume slavery in jail. Okay, a lot of people come to this country think that it's all this, all of that, and they end up getting stuck. Okay, there was a video that I came across which touched my heart. There was an African security guard my kids showed me that the students in the college actually raised twenty thousand dollars for this african security guard to be able to go visit his family because he haven't visited him over 20 years he came here and got stuck enough to just pay bills drink water and send a little bit to his family he couldn't go back and visit okay and i know the people who are americans caucasian like see you want to come to our country go back to your country guess what a lot of us are planning on it OK, but we can't because America's doing shit like destroying land so they could create this one world order. So remember, this is how. The migrant issue is fueled. We got Venezuela's coming here. We got the um, what I told you, what was that gang? Oh, no, we about to get to the crisis now, the migrant crisis. Now we got um, one of the most lethal gangs from Venezuela here. That's not the Middle East, okay? We have Chinese, I don't know if they're nationals, we don't know who they are, coming over as well. That's not the East. The borders are wide open to countries who don't like us. Hold on. Let me make sure because my um, thing blacked out. To countries who don't like us because of what I explained to you earlier. I know you may not like what I'm saying tonight, but I have to be truthfully and bloody honest to you guys because I'm trying to save souls. You have to know the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so you can digest it. We all repent. 
We ask Jesus Christ to guide us and forgive us. And we're going to watch these people burn. Either you want to right or the left. Now, let's. Would you like to learn a brand new and innovative way to invest your extra money that has a low barrier to entry and low competition? What if I told you that it is a guaranteed method to get up to 18 to 20% return on your investment? Tax lien and deed purchasing is the only way to get into the real estate market through the back door. No credit and no loans needed. This method isn't commonly taught and therefore the competition is very low for now. Put together a 14 hour info packed course which will teach you everything you'll need to know to get started. Learn at your own pace, step-by-step -step guided video and aids to start you on the TLC deed investment process. The course offers many learning tools for new investors, helping ensure you safely invest in tax liens and deeds. Contact us today and join the buyback team.